Amen. Okay. I got my watch up here. Y'all know what that means, right? When a pastor has a clock? It means nothing. It just means he's got a clock. All right. The title of the message is Facing Your Giants. How many of y'all got giants in your lives? Amen. I want to start with reading 1 Samuel. And I put a new battery in this thing myself today. So I should be good. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Them batteries drain quick, so I think I'll bring one every week so I can get around here. And get right up to you and get personal. All right, 1 Samuel 17, if you want to read along, I'm going to start with verse 38. And this is really good. You all know the story. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword about up upon his armor, and, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones Amen. out of the brook. Amen. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. He took that step. Amen. And the Philistines came on and drew near unto, him, unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him as well. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stays? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then David and then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Amen. I think he was mad. Amen. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. He said, I'm going to cut your head off. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Glory to God. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy scripture this morning. Woo, five smooth stones mm. it's not much of an arsenal is it it's not much of a weapon you know some of y'all know the daisy cutters bunker busters smart bombs you've heard of all these different things maybe you've heard of them surely you have especially with all the terror war on terror and the bunkers and they got special bombs that you can now that their program, they don't, they don't go off till they get as far down the ground as they can go. And when they stop, then they blow up, get rid of these bunkers that these folks are in. And these are just modern weapons that are used today in, in our technology to fight against the enemy. Um, the, the, the weaponry is just a total, I mean, the array is just awesome power. Some of us that work with the military know of when I started in 1980, I was lucky to be able to see in the night. I didn't know what night vision was. We own the night now. Amen. When I was uh, telling my age, but, you know, in, in the, in the ni in early 90s, you were lucky to tell if it was a rabbit. You could just tell it was a spot. But now you can tell how much soda is in their can at 1,000 yards. It's awesome. It's powerful. And you can shoot the top or the bottom of the can if you want to. It's user-friendly. You can just be a mechanic and do it. It's powerful. So the technology is unreal in fact with all the firearms and the night vision and the kevlar and the bulletproof stuff that we have today i'm sure that most veterans vietnam veterans are would be quite jealous to see all these things that they have Amen. but also happy because it's probably their sons that are out there anyway Amen. with the use of computer technology weapons are getting smarter and more efficient robots that do all kinds of things missiles that are fired and then they start their own little Tracking with satellites. With the types of weapons available today, the modern battlefield, 
be a fearsome place. Amen. But what we just read is nowhere near anything like that. In fact, David stood before Goliath and all they had was just some few archaic or antiquated to us a yeah, yeah. sword, bronze sword. Mm. They did have weapons, but they were swords, spears, javelins. It would seem, however, that the Philistine had his upper hand. He had the latest technology of the day. See, we have the latest technology today, but is it of God? The Philistine had the latest technology of today. The bronze armor, the bronze sword, and the helmet, the shield, everything he had to take on a little guy who had nothing but five smooth stones. In fact, they made sure, the Philistines made sure that the Israelites didn't have a possible way of having it. They didn't have any blacksmiths. You read in the Word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 13, they didn't even have blacksmiths. The Israelites had to go to the Philistines to sharpen their uh, plows. They had nothing. It's probably why David was pretty good with that sling we're getting to, right? Glory. All the Israelites would go down to the Philistines to get their farm equipment sharpened. Now, the account of David and Goliath puts it in perspective for you and me about who has the best technology and who don't. David had nothing. Amen. From the world's point of view. Amen. Goliath was a giant of a man. He was wearing everything. And David had five smooth stones. Now, I've been asked, and I've asked myself a lot of times, and some of y'all are going to say the same thing. Why did he have five smooth stones? Why five? And a lot of you say, because Goliath had four brothers. Because <laughs> he did. First Samuel 21 tells us he had four brothers. And that's what, them, that's what them four rocks are for. It's a great little Bible study and trivia, but anybody here been on the battlefield? How many of y'all been to war? How many of y'all, okay. How many of y'all went hunting? Yeah. When, okay. How many of y'all only took one bullet to shoot a deer? <laughs> oh, okay. How many took none? <laughs> well, I, we won't go there. That's like... So, I mean, common sense tells you you're going to take more than just one bullet, right? You don't, go to a, you don't go to a fight with just one bullet. But anyway, he had five smooth stones. And we're going to call them faith. Faith. Five smooth stones. There's five letters in faith. Amen? Amen. We want to go with fortitude, aggression, initiative, testimony, and help. Of course, help comes from above. Amen. Five smooth stones in the hand of a young Jewish boy who would one day be king. But for now, in the eyes of Goliath, he was nothing but a runt, a punk, just a kid with five stones. And he, he cursed him. He didn't know David's God. <laughs> He's fixing to get to know him real quick. Fixing to wish he knew him really better. Okay, the first one's fortitude. And it just means mental and emotional strength in facing difficulty, adversity, danger, or temptation courageously. Now, break this down. Bottom line is David had guts. He's the youngest, littlest, ruddy punk on the, on the battlefield. And all these trained Israelites, semi-trained, don't want nothing to do with Goliath. They ran. It says the Israelites were dismayed and greatly afraid in verse 24. It says, and all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. They were scared to death just because he walked out. But David wasn't. Why? Because he was courageous and he had the fortitude. And that came from heaven. That came from God. The Israelites cowered, but he didn't. David was not afraid to take on this superior foe. And he was a superior. We've already got this figured out. He had everything he needed. Okay. Goliath had everything he physically needed from the world's point of view to wipe David out. And David goes in with a sling and five smooth stones. I'd be laughing too if I was Goliath. The giant's threats meant nothing, meant nothing to David though. David didn't care because David knew who he was in God. I had a brother that's been healed a couple times from different things and he's talking about the anointing that God has on me. And I, believe, and I agree with that. And I said, you, you know, I'm working on a book that talks about the very first uh, 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 healing. But it's of God. God brought that healing. Amen. And David knew he was in God. Amen. He knew where everything was coming from. 
So David wasn't scared. He was courageous. He had the fortitude to take on what most already believed, and, and we know the whole war, the whole uh, Israelite army was afraid of. But David was unwilling to use untested weaponry. Saul wanted him to use all that stuff, and he knew it wasn't tested for him. Our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are of the Spirit. Our enemies are of the Spirit. Our battle is of the Spirit. When a person offends you, it's not that person. It's Satan working through them. So in fact, instead of being mad at the person, you should be sad for them because if it's a Christian, which it usually is, Satan is using them to stir you up. I'm getting on to Wednesday night, ain't I? Anyway, in 2 Corinthians it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Okay? This is the word of God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Amen. The weapons that we use in our fight against giants that we need to fight have been tested. And one of them is fortitude. It's been tested. Our faith is required for facing giants. Our fortitude is required. If you ain't courageous, you'll never make it. You know, some of y'all's giants is just saying God bless you to somebody at Walmart. I'm going to tell you, we got to take baby steps because before you're going to start doing something even more outrageous like saying, I want to start a youth uh, Bible study for the girls, you got to learn to pray in public. Amen. Amen, sister? And then when you get on fire and you get past that giant, you there ain't no giants. I got, I got folks in here right now that have already grown up. They just keep growing and it just blesses me. God says, I'm, I'm working, just stay out of the way. Well, I ain't. Will you want to pray? No. Ooh, the Holy Spirit got a hold of that lady. Now she gets excited. Who wants to pray? Hands already up. Oh, I'll pray, I'll pray. That giant's been conquered. Some of y'all still got a giant, and that one giant keeps you from doing anything else because you won't even say, God bless you, at the lady at Walmart after you buy it. And you got it. It's in your head, and you're like, I'm supposed to say, God bless you. That didn't come from you. That came from God saying, tell him God bless you. Have a blessed day. Well, how you doing today, Katie? I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm doing so good the devil's in trouble. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too annoying to be disappointed. Woo! Amen. You're supposed to be telling them something, but you just stifle it. That giant one. Have the fortitude and the courage to move on. Amen? Amen. Woo! Amen. Number, President Bush, in 2007, presented a Medal of Honor to Corporal Jason Dunham's family because he threw himself on a grenade for the men around him. That's fortitude. That's courage. He knew what was going to happen. He probably wished he would have died at, at that moment too because he lasted for eight more days before he went home to be with Jesus. But that's fortitude. A in faith, aggression. Any offensive action, attack, or procedure. David was aggressive in his defense. You know some of the best defense is the offense. They were at a standstill. Mm. They were afraid. The giant cursed their God, and that got David's attention. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's defying our God? Boy, he got mad about that. He stood up to the enemy's insults. Do you? Mm-mm. You know, these insults can be simple things as our way of life being judged because we are pushing God's way of life, God's morals, God's scruples, and your friends and family are telling you that you're wrong that you're being judgmental, that you're not being tolerant. Hello. You need, to, you need to what? You need to be aggressive. You need to have the aggression to move on because God's trying. You've got the courage. You have the aggression. Believers, this is, this is what we're trying to be. This is what society and our country, the world, is trying to teach us, and that is that believers are not supposed to be aggressive. We're supposed to be passive. We're supposed to turn the cheek. That's what we hear. Jesus Christ himself didn't say, go back and find the guy and get smacked again. He didn't say that. We may have to take the fight to the enemy, folks. At the same time, the enemy is also bold enough to bring it right into your home with your family, through your TV. Again, that battle that we fight is spiritual, not physical. It's spiritual. Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness, 
of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Mm -mm -mm. Are you aggressive enough? Something to pray about. I forgot I had these. Fortitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aggression. And the next one, initiative. Initiative just means an introductory act or step. Leading action, readiness and ability in initiating action, one's personal responsible decision. And I put in there, the first step is taking the first step. Now, some of y'all have heard that message more than once. You'll probably hear it again. Right now, I'm being led to kind of do that at Biker Bash. The first step is taking the first step. Amen. Amen. David asked, is there not a cause? I mean, all the Israelites are over here on the hill. All the Philistines are over here on this ridge. This big old giant walks down here and curses our God every day. And ain't, ain't there a cause? And everybody's going, well, yeah, sort of. Says, well, somebody's got to take the first step. Somebody's got to take the initiative to take on the giant. Or the giant's going to win every day. Giant's going to come out, defile your God, and you're just going to walk away like a whipped pup with your tail between your legs. See, that giant, again, it could be just saying, God bless you to somebody. And that giant's winning daily, 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 and you ain't never getting any further in your walk. We're all supposed to be groomed, to be blood-bought saints of God, that people are just... They're just scared to see you coming. Unless they're of God. Then they're going to hug you. Hmm? Amen. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit will go before you. The more powerful you get, the Holy Spirit will start preparing them. You'll get salvations. Woo! People healed. Mm-mm-mm. David, yeah, we got to... The Christians is a sleeping giant. The church is a sleeping giant because people ain't believing in the power that they have that's been bestowed from Jesus Christ to us. Through the Holy Spirit. David acted because he drew a line of sand. He said, is there not a cause? He recognized that defeat would put them back where they came from, into slavery. There is a cause. The Israelites pursued the enemy after David's victory. You realize it took one man to stand up and to take the initiative. Okay, he had the fortitude. He was aggressive. He took the initiative, and they all followed when the giant went down, they pursued. They went after him, amen? It took one person's initiative, one person to have the fortitude, one person to be aggressive, and to take the initiative, and they all followed him after that. You know, I don't know how many of y'all have ever, I didn't see a whole lot of military hands, but uh, some of y'all work in uh, um, crowd control for riots, and you're taught during crowd control to pick out the person that looks like he's getting some followers, and you take him out right then. You take him out. You, you peacefully get him, and you take him out of that crowd. And that's your first arrest. But if you don't, the three or four, six, seven, 20 followers he's getting, you're in trouble. You will lose. I don't care how many of you got. It's the same way on our side of the house, folks. God's waiting for somebody to speak up on his behalf. He is waiting for somebody, for you to speak to somebody in your family that needs to hear about Jesus Christ, and you ain't doing it, and God's just up there crying, going, man, I got, I got, I've, got a, uh, I've got a divine appointment for you. I got a salvation for my glory waiting for you to get off your rear end and go do something. Mm. And then other people in your family start acting up. Next thing you know, everybody be scared to be around the Van Horn. Huh? Woo! I cried while ago. He's doing I'll Fly Away. And Ethan was loud enough that I heard him singing I'll Fly Away. And he was, he was playing with his hymnals. He's playing with his hymnals. I've had people, I'm getting on the rabbit trail. I don't do that very often, but God's got a reason. You know, uh, we do church differently here. Some folks have talked about, you know, we've got to have all these different uh, Bible studies for the kids. I'll tell you right now, my true belief is if they're five, they need to be in here. They're four and below. We can do something with them, Maybe. But that's just leading proof right there. I started crying when he came over here. He came over here while we're praying. Nobody coaxed him or asked him, and he moved us out of his way like big giants, and he laid his hand, and he Amen. put his hand up, and he started praying. Amen. You know, that's the faith of a child. Whew. Why? Well, he wasn't being babysat back there. He's seeing some true blood-bought saints of God that truly believe that God's going to do something if they'll just pray about it, and he's believing that. Now, Grandma's not feeling good, and he is. Grandma, you, you, you're doing okay. He'd go pray for Grandma. He's also pretty bold, too. He said, you know Jesus? Woo! He asked his grandma, a five-year-old, walking out, and he said, Mom, he calls her Mom, Mom, you know Jesus? She goes, well, I do. He goes, that's good. That's a short sermon right there. Woo! 
He's going to be like his daddy. <laughs> okay. Fortitude. Aggression. Initiative. Testimony. Each one of these takes a little longer. Testimony is simply evidence in support of a fact or statement of proof. And I put in there, it comes from living a life of faith. You can't have a testimony if you're not walking with God. Some of us don't have much of a testimony, amen? We don't. But the more we do things for the Lord, the more that we'll have testimonies. Some of us, you're around some people, and that's all constantly testimony, 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 testimony. Mm. That's powerful. David had killed a lion. David had killed a bear. You know, when they took the little lamb, the sheep. His testimony to Saul was, I can do it. Saul said, you can't do it. You're just a ruddy punk. You know, that's Monty's commentary. I haven't printed it yet. But he's saying, you can't do it. You're not up to it. You ain't been trained. You're just a shepherd. You got a staff and, some, and, a, and, a, and an empty sack, I guess, because he didn't have any stones at, at the time, apparently. Well, you can't do it. Well, I killed a bear. I killed a lion. Well, that ain't what he said. He said, the Lord. Huh? Took me out of the paw of a bear and the paw of a lion. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And he said, if my God can do that, he can take that Philistine out too. Amen. That's testimony. And your testimony comes from living a life of faith and doing those things. See, when you finally get past that very first giant and you turn into a, 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 an obnoxious Christian in Gatesville, you're going to start having testimonies. You're going to start saying, the church light have a thing, it's called a write-up. We do a write-up. Anytime we pray with somebody, if we're wearing, our, we're wearing our anointing, our mantle, the magic, my anointed gear illuminating Christ. Amen. Woo. And we, 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 it ain't got nothing to do with us. We believe it's the, the magic, the anointing from God, and we write it up. Well, you don't have to be a church light member. You'll be a highway to heaven biker church member or a visitor. And God tells you to tell somebody, God bless you. Next thing you know, they might be crying and asking for prayer. That's, that's what we call write-ups. Somebody needed to hear you say that, and then they needed a prayer. I was just playing around one day, and I, there was a ball full of those yellow balls with a little smiley face on them. We were at Walmart in Gatesville. This is a few years ago. And the Lord said, tell her, tell her. And I was like, oh, and this, I was struggling with this. This was years ago. Now, I, 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 anyway, I said, ma'am, ma'am. And she looked at me like, what? And I said, you see it? And she looks at all these balls and looks back at me like, I, like, like I've got a third eye in my forehead. <laughs> like I don't need to be talking to her. She looked mad at the world. And I said, do you see them? And she looks again. She looks at me like, what? And I go, it's contagious. They're all smiling. <laughs> and she started almost crying. She said, sir, you don't know how much I needed to hear that. I didn't say nothing about Jesus at all. But that anointing was there. Ooh, glory. Testimony. Do you have a testimony? Testimony comes from living a life of faith. Are you living a life of faith? That hurts some folks. Mm. What's faith in done? Age. Help. Help means to give or provide what is necessary to accomplish a task or satisfy a need. Contribute strength or means to. Assistance to. Cooperate effectively with. Aid or assist. But it comes from above. Help comes from above. So if you ain't prayed yet for fortitude, and you ain't prayed for being aggressive, if you ain't prayed for initiative, if you ain't prayed to have testimony in your life, and some of y'all know a lot of times my prayer ends with, and let, let us all return back as walking testimonies of your works in us, because we should have testimonies. If you leave here this Sunday and you come back next Sunday and you don't have a testimony for the last six days of your life of something God did in your life, you didn't learn nothing. You left unchanged. You, you play in church. We don't play church here. Don't care to play church. There's plenty of people playing church. I want people to come back and say, you ain't going to believe what happened at work. Ooh. Mm. Or at Walmarts. Or HEB. Sonic. Somewhere. Gatesville. Coriel. David had help, didn't he? He recognized that he couldn't do it alone. We can't do it alone. We can try all day long. We can try the rest of our lives, but we'll never get it done. No one can face a giant alone. And some of y'all's giants are just, like I said, just simple things. Maybe it's something you're trying to quit doing. I had a lady up here earlier. The giant won this week. We do lose some battles. And she was in tears because 
Satan got in there for a little while. See, that's our biggest giant, Satan. Putting fear into us to not do what God wants us to. Satan wants us all to eat that apple, that forbidden fruit. Do something we're not supposed to. You know you're getting closer to God when you do something you shouldn't do and you start feeling bad about it right away. Now, if you don't feel bad about it, you're thinking about it, amen? Then you're getting closer and closer. That walk's going, amen? Now, Jesus Christ faced a bigger giant than any of us will. I pray. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus Christ asked for help. Now, I think that's about the best example we can have. Don't need a whole list of examples. He cried to Daddy and says, I don't want to do this. You're asking me to do this. See, God's ask, asking each and one of y'all to do something. I don't know what it is, but y'all know. The Holy Spirit, if you came expecting the Holy Spirit's already, wham! You're going, oh, man, I can't believe you're preaching to me. God's touched each and every one of y'all. If you came expecting with an open heart, there's something he's asked you to do, he's been asking you to do, and you ain't doing it. That giant is in your way of your walk to become more mature with Jesus Christ. And he wants to help you. Jesus Christ said, Daddy, I can't do this. But not my will, your will be done. Amen? We've got to pray for God to help us. David faced the giant in the name of the Lord, and we can do that. We can be victorious if we'll use the name of Jesus and believe with all our hearts. In conclusion, five smooth stones. Five smooth stones. Fortitude, aggression, initiative, testimony, and help, which comes from above. I'm believing that God's touched you with this message, and I'm believing that you want the same faith. Amen. You want that fortitude. You want to have the aggression. You want to take the initiative. You want to have testimonies in your life of what God's doing in your life. And to get it, you need to ask for help all the time. You cannot have faith, you, this faith, you cannot have faith, and you cannot be getting more mature with the Lord if you've never had Him in your life to begin with. So let's make sure of that before we pray for what God has touched each one of us about. Every head bowed and all eyes closed. I'm only going to ask one time, did God bring anybody in here this morning that has never given their life to Him? He would love for you to be part of His family today. Is there one single person in here that doesn't know Jesus Christ? Amen. Glory to God. Okay, y'all can look up here. Now I know that the, whole, the Holy Spirit has touched each and every one of you that came expecting and that came with a pure heart, okay? Because it's not about me. It's not about this message even. It's about what God wanted to touch you with. I may have been talking about one thing and God touched you about something else, but each and every one of you, I truly believe, that came expecting with an open heart, got touched this morning, and the Lord wants to help you with that individual thing. It could be fortitude, aggression, initiative, testimony. It could even that you just ain't been asking for help, period. Or it could be a whole bunch of those. How many of y'all have been touched and already need to be? Let's pray. Glory to God. Father God, I thank you right now for this powerful message that you gave. Lord, I just thank you for moving me out of the way. And I thank you again for the music that ministered to the hearts and got it prepared for your word. Lord, right now, I don't know what those needs are, but the hands just started flying up. So you've touched this entire sanctuary as you always promised you would. And Lord, for all of us that have the open heart and came expecting... Lord, I ask for that specific need, whatever it is, whether it's for the fortitude, for them to, to, to actually have the courage to do whatever it is you're asking them to do. Lord, I just pray that today, before it turns dark, that they feel it and they use it. Lord, if it's the aggressiveness, if they, it, those of us that have sit back passive, even though we've got, we, we feel like we've got the courage, I ask for you to touch them. Lord, the initiative. Hmm even gets harder as we're going here, the initiative. People that you've given the courage, they know they can feel the courage, and they're aggressive in some things, but they can't take the initiative when there's a whole group sitting back saying, that giant's too big for us. Lord, let them step forth. Give them the fortitude, the aggression, and the initiative to take on that giant just for your glory. And Lord, let them not get a big head. At this point, it's real simple to start becoming pride, proud of themselves. Lord, let them be humbled by your works so that they'll return back with testimony. Some of us, Lord, I know the hands went up because they know there's no testimony in their lives. There's no manifestation. They don't have a tangible piece of evidence of you working in their lives. Some of them, right now, Lord, their hands went up because they want that. And I'm praying, Lord, before we come back 
together again, as I have so many times, that we come back with tangible evidence, a testimony to be able to verbally tell someone what you're doing in our lives. And last, but the most important that you saved for last in this powerful message is help. None of it's possible without asking you. And Lord, I pray everyone here, not only privately, but in the public, will start asking for your help with everything so they can have the true faith of the five smooth stones and start wiping out these giants that are in their lives. And at the same time, Lord, we ask for your traveling mercies as we leave today, your hedge of protection around us. Don't let us miss those divine appointments and let us glorify you with our actions. Not only our actions, but our words and our deeds. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.